there. Good evening, Dr. L Lovely. Good evening, Dr. Anurag. Good evening, Dr. Sikandar, Dr. Anish, Dr. T.S. World. There. Oh, Good evening, Dr. Lovely. Good evening, buddy. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Hello, Dr. Gayatri. Just give me a second. This live chat is more important for me. Hey, good evening, Dr. Nathan. Good evening, Dr. Nichelle. Dr. Shalesh, Dr. Sandhya. Good evening, good evening, all. Good evening, all. I'm so glad to be with you. Always glad to be with you. Hey, Dr. Jawahar Ali. So good to see you, buddy. Fine. So, can you allow me to start? So, we are about to start this topic of uh, leftover topics of the topics of uh, hepatobiliary. Again, we'll uh, do it in a concise way, as concise way as possible, as concise way as possible. Hello, Dr. Nidhi. Fine. So you see, this happens to be the gallbladder. This happens to be the gallbladder. And the yellow color thing is the duct of the gallbladder, the cystic duct. Fine. Now, this is a common hepatic duct, right hepatic duct, left hepatic duct. And when the common hepatic duct, it joins with the cystic duct, it is going to form common bile duct. And where will the common bile duct open in the second part of duodenum at the ampulla of waiter at the ampulla of waiter fine now oh just a second let me just choose a new page i'm just done with the class actually so this is in that mode fine so let me just draw this let me just draw this up fine so you see this is right hepatic duct left hepatic duct this is common hepatic duct common hepatic duct and let's say this is the cystic duct now when the cystic duct meets up the common hepatic duct it forms the common bile duct now common bile duct along with the main pancreatic duct fine now this opens up into the second part of the duodenum second part of the duodenum and you know from your knowledge of anatomy that there is a sphincter here sphincter sphincter of od sphincter of od fine now what is the purpose of this sphincter what is the purpose of this sphincter see normally this sphincter is closed the sphincter is closed the sphincter will close whenever the patient will eat food. So, which will, which uh, hormone will make it open up? Cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin will make this sphincter open up. Now, till the time the sphincter is not opening, what is happening? See, this is the bile. Bile wants to enter the duodenum. But because the, the the sphincter of Odai is closed, what will happen? Bile will go here. Bile will enter into the gallbladder. Bile will enter into the gallbladder. Fine. Now, you see here. What are the significant things to remember? So, bile. Bile, which is made up of 97% uh, of water. Bile is secreted at the rate of around 40 to 50 ml per hour. 40 to 50 ml per hour. Dr. Pata and Mule. Wow. So you're from South Sudan. Glad to note that, buddy. Dr. Samir the Sadia. Good to have you here, buddy. Bile is secreted at the rate of 40 to 50 ml per hour. Fine. Now, because the sphincter of Oda is closed, the bile enters gallbladder fine now here it is concentrated by 5 to 10 times it is concentrated by 5 to 10 
times fine 5 to 10 times now while i told you 97 percent of the bile is water now this also has got bile salt also has got bile salts fine for example you know litho folic acid don't worry it's going to be a concise class only fine deoxy folic acid chino deoxy folic acid apart from this bile also has got phospholipid bile also has got phospholipids bile also has got bilirubin fine bile also has got cholesterol the important thing there cholesterol the important thing there fine now so what are we going to study over here we are going to study the gallstones the gallstones fine so gallstones could be either made up of cholesterol only fine could be either mixed stones fine mixed stone that means they will contain pigment they will contain cholesterol they will contain the bile salts fine they will contain the calcium salts fine and then the third one third one would be the pigment stones now pigment stones by definition are those stones which contain less than 30 percent of the cholesterol pigment stones are those stones which contains less than 30 percent of the cholesterol 30 percent of the cholesterol now you see good evening dr amit i'm glad to have you here buddy now you see here uh we speak about the stones later but let's have a very quick look about the anatomy and you see cystic duct is not a simple structure it has got spiral walls of heister so they may open it or close it fine now it also has got a sphincter of lutkans fine lutkans yes 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 that's uh, that, that that's uh, extra part in the anatomy Gall uh, gallbladder does not have a muscularis mucosa and submucosa what are the name of the crypts name of the crypts are the crypts of lushka crypts of lushka crypts of lushka fine crypt of lushka very good now you see here this is the most common congenital anomaly most common congenital anomaly the phrygian cap phrygian cap is the most common congenital anomaly see this is a phrygian cap that is the most common congenital anomaly this test is oral cholecystography oral cholecystography showing the phrygian cap what is phrygian cap it is just the infolding 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 of the gallbladder infolding of the gallbladder now that is a normal variant that is a normal variant it does not indicate cholecystectomy we don't need to do anything because this is a perfectly normal variant now whereas hartman pouch is usually seen in association with the gallstone is usually seen in an association with gallstone fine so the gallstone may actually lodge over here may actually lodge over here gallstone may actually lodge in the heart man's pouch may actually lodge in the heart man's pouch fine now you see here that's what i told you this sphincter will remain closed so consequently what will happen the bile will enter bile will enter into the gallbladder bile will enter into the gallbladder and there it will be concentrated by five to ten times concentrated by five to ten times fine now you see the different gallstones the cholesterol gallstones fine the pigment gallstones and the mixed gallstones so by far they are considered the most common they are considered the most common fine now you see what happens is just understand it very quickly so that uh, we can take up this topic of uh, pigment stones first we are going to take up the topic of pigment stones now you see here just understand it step by step hemoglobin fine it breaks down and releases biliverdin fine now biliverdin is converted to unconjugated bilirubin fine now unconjugated bilirubin ultimately adds up with the albumin with the albumin fine now again 
it is converted to conjugated bilirubin when it is converted to conjugated bilirubin it is excreted it is excreted it is excreted in the in the bile when it is excreted in the bile now what happens is when when cholesterol stone is more common in the western population is more common in the western population see dr jawahar ali cholesterol stone is more common in the western population the mixed stones main content of the mixed stone is cholesterol only main content of the mixed stone is cholesterol only fine now you see but pure cholesterol stones they are rare pure cholesterol stones they are rare fine so when we say mixed stone that means the main content is still cholesterol only fine now you see here here they will be reabsorbed here they will be reabsorbed fine now you see here that is called as enterohepatic recirculation of the bile salts enterohepatic recirculations of the bile salts fine now you see what happens is this is a uh, fine so conjugation is done in the liver conjugation do is done in the liver conjugated bilirubin when it mixes up with the proteins now you see here suppose there is too much of unconjugated bilirubin so liver won't be able to process it liver won't be able to process it and this conjugated bilirubin will be passed in the bile where it will form black pigment stones basically liver is the one who is going to conjugate the bilirubin liver is the one who is going to conjugate the bilirubin so if the liver is not able to work up to its full capacity fine there will be too much of un unconjugated bilirubin so this will happen if your patient is suffering from hemolytic anemia if your patient is suffering from hemolytic anemia fine for example your patient is suffering from spherocytosis fine for example your patient is suffering from uh, let's say a uh, sickle cell disease your patient is suffering from sickle cell disease fine let's say your patient is suffering from cirrhosis of the liver you know the liver will not be able to work up to its full capacity liver won't be able to work up to its full capacity fine now consequently what will happen the black pigment stones will form black pigment stones they are made up of calcium bilirubinate they are made up of calcium bilirubinate also your patient may have calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate as the content calcium carbonate as the content unconjugated bilirubin see conjugated unconjugated bilirubin you see here oh oh you see here bilirubin metabolism because we don't have much time so that's why we don't go into the details here you see here so bilirubin let's say free bilirubin so bilirubin will mix up with albumin bilirubin will mix up with albumin in the liver will mix up with uh, albumin in the liver fine now hepatocytes in the liver fine now they will conjugate the unconjugated bilirubin that means they will mix it up with the albumin albumin is produced in the liver only fine now this will give rise to conjugated bilirubin this will give rise to conjugated bilirubin so this conjugated bilirubin will be excreted will be excreted via intestine will be excreted via intestine have a look at this mechanism once again dr lovely sahu that explains Focus on this area, Dr. Lovely Sahu. We'll wait for you.
focus on this area right So you see bilirubin, bilirubin without albumin, that will be unconjugated bilirubin, unconjugated bilirubin, right? Thanks, buddy. So, so they will form the black pigment stone. Black pigment stones, they are multiple. Black pigment stones, they are multiple. Multiple black pigment stones, fine. Now, these are the causes. Multiple black pigments, so they are small, they are friable, they are irregular. Now, what happens is sometimes brown pigment stones form. Brown pigment stones form. Now, you see what happens is conjugated, conjugated bilirubin, conjugated bilirubin is converted again to unconjugated bilirubin is converted again to unconjugated bilirubin that means let's say your patient does not have any of the disorder everything is normal fine your patient is secreting conjugated bilirubin into the intestine but he has got some infection with the bacteria which produce an enzyme beta glucuronidase now beta glucuronidase will convert conjugated bilirubin to unconjugated bilirubin again it will convert to unconjugated bilirubin now what is the problem unconjugated bilirubin easily precipitates easily precipitates and it gives rise to stone formation it gives rise to stone formation so now your patient will have brown pigment stones your patient will have brown pigment stones what are the bacteria e coli and klebsiella infection will reach the bile duct first rather than reaching the gallbladder hence these stones are com commonly seen in the bile duct. Commonly seen in the bile duct. These stones are commonly seen if your patient has ascariasis. If your patient has ascariasis. If your patient has ascariasis. Now let's move to the mixed stones with cholesterol as the main content. With cholesterol as the main content. What are the causes if the bile itself is lithogenic if the bile itself is lithogenic lithogenic means that uh, it has propensity to form stone propensity to form stones obesity diet rich in fats drugs like chloe Fibrate. You know, these drugs, they, they increase the cholesterol content in the bile. They increase the cholesterol content in the bile. Fine. Decreased bile salts. Decreased bile salts. Fine. For example, in the primary biliary cirrhosis, in the primary biliary cirrhosis, fine. Estrogen, estrogen, you know, estrogen, we use oral contraceptive pills, oral contraceptive pills. So, ileal bypass, ileal bypass, that means when we, well, let's say, we, we remove the terminal part of the intestine, we remove the terminal part of the intestine, what will happen? The bile salts will not be absorbed, bile salts will not be absorbed. Fine. If the bile salts, they are not absorbed, what will happen? All the, the bile salts, if they are not reabsorbed, all the bile salts will be thrown out with the stools. Fine. So there will be very less of bile salts and too much of cholesterol. So normally what happens is cholesterol and bile salts, their balance is maintained. Their balance is maintained. Fine. But here, the balance will not be maintained. There will be too much of cholesterol and too little of bile salts. Why? Because the bile salts are being excreted continuously. Bile salts are excreted out. 
Why? Because bile salts, they were to be absorbed in the ileum and you have cut the ileum. You have bypassed the ileum. Now, the food which your patient is eating is not going to terminal ileum. That is why the bile salts are not being able to, I mean, are uh, not being reabsorbed. Fine. Then, decreased biliary lecithin that that is the one which prevents that is the one which prevents the crystallization of the cholesterol so this occurs due to mdr3 gene mutation this occurs due to mdr3 gene mutation now this can also occur if there is bile stasis, we can call this biliary stasis. We can call this as biliary stasis. Now, how does it occur? It occurs because of oral contraceptive pills. It occurs if your patient has massive burns. It occurs if your patient had undergone truncal vagotomy. If your patient had undergone truncal vagotomy, remember truncal vagotomy would cause stasis if your patient is on prolonged fasting or total parenteral nutrition total parenteral nutrition yes of course by pregnancy how could i forget it the most common cause there fine now clinical feature you know at our time they used to say that the gallbladder gallstones will be present in the ffff fat fertile, flatulent, female of 40. So these are the common risk factors, fat, obese, fertile, had pregnancies, flatulent, flatulent means she is eating too much of fatty foods, female, female sex because of estrogen, female of 40, that means by 40 years of age, estrogen and pregnancy, they have caused their maximum effect. So now your patient is likely to land up into, likely to land up into gallstones, fine. So asymptomatic in around 90% of the cases. When they are symptomatic, this will cause dyspepsia. This will cause dyspepsia, fine. Remember, gallbladder also produces 20 ml of mucus every day. Now, let's say there is a big stone. There is a big stone which is stuck up in the cystic duct. That means the bile cannot enter gallbladder now. What will happen? It will continue to secrete 20 ml of mucus per day. 20 ml of mucus per day. That means your patient can develop a condition which is called as mucosal condition, which is called as mucosal condition, which is called as mucosal. Fine. Now, then it can cause acute and chronic cholecystitis this can also cause pancreatitis we'll understand in the topic of uh, pancreatitis uh, dr lovely sahu ocp oral contraceptive pills they have estrogen they have progesterone remember progesterone is a relaxing hormone it will cause relaxation everywhere so that will cause the stasis that will cause the stasis of gallbladder gallbladder will not contract vigorously Fine. So that is why there will be stasis. There will be stasis. Fine. So these are the different conditions which it causes. Fine. Now, commonly it causes chronic cholecystitis. Chronic cholecystitis because the stone will be there for long. So this will cause repeated attacks of Pillory colic. Lovely Peter, uh, don't fold your hands. We are friends. We are friends. You know, <laughs> I like to call young people my friends because that way I also feel young. I also feel young. <laughs> so this causes fibrosis in the gallbladder wall. What is the treatment? The preferred treatment is leptin. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy, preferred treatment is laparoscopic cholecystectomy. 
the other thing which is caused by the gallstones is acute cholecystitis acute cholecystitis fine when you become a surgeon the only thing on your mind is lap coli lap coli lap cholecystectomy fine so it was going to cause acute cholecystitis acute cholecystitis there will be edema there will be infection you see here now, you see, this is how the scarish looks like, a linear opacity, linear opacity, right? Linear opacity. See, this is how the scarish looks like on ERCP, ERCP, right? Linear opacity. Now, these are the different causes. These are the different causes from gallstone. Now, you see, this is a gallstone. Gallstone. Now, this is seen on MRCP. Someone asked me yesterday, sir, uh, which uh, one to write as a investigation of choice? If there is anything related to duct, it will be MRCP or ERCP. Go for MRCP if they have asked you investigation of choice. If they have asked you gold standard investigation, go in for ERCP. Anything related to duct, go in for MRCP. Fine. If they have asked you about the solid swelling, then go in for ultrasound. Then go in for ultrasound as first investigation and contrast CT as confirmatory investigation. As confirmatory investigation. Fine. Now, you see here, this is called as Mercedes-Benz sign. This is called as Mercedes-Benz sign. Why? Because the stones may have some air also. Stone may have some air also called as Mercedes-Benz sign. Also called as seagull sign. Seagull sign as a bird. Seagull sign. So you see here see gull sign like a bird remember you used to make drawings there we used to make drawings in the school with the birds flying fine see gull sign see gull sign now we'll come to this now you see acute cholecystitis acute cholecystitis this is what happens in acute cholecystitis your patient develops acute severe infection acute severe infection and acute severe infection there will be edema there will be edema in the wall of the gallbladder and also around the gallbladder now you see the gallbladder is inflamed you check you palpate in the right hypochondrium of the patient you ask the patient to take a deep breath like this patient will stop immediately because of the severe pain Fine. So this is called as Murphy's sign. Murphy's sign. What is Murphy's sign? That is inspiratory arrest. Inspiratory arrest. Patient won't be able to complete his or her breath. Fine. Inspiratory arrest. Also, your patient may display BOA sign. Let me just show you BOA sign. See, BOA sign. There will be hyperesthesia below the right scapula. Hyperesthesia below the right scapula due to irritation of the peritoneum. Due to irritation of the peritoneum. Fine. Now, Tokyo guidelines presented in 2007, revised in 2013, and again revised in 2018. They will tell you what is the grade of acute cholecystitis. What is the grade of acute cholecystitis? Just remember the name, nothing else. Fine. Acute cholecystitis. Grade 1 is mild. Grade 2 is moderate. Grade 3 is severe. They were asked in the examination two years ago. Fine. You see the Mercedes-Benz sign. Fine. Mercedes Benz sign. Again, we come to this BOA sign. So, if they ask you what is the most common clinical feature, most common clinical feature will be pain. Most common clinical feature will be pain. Fine. Now, also 
you can get done hida scan hida scan is considered confirmatory remember yesterday i told you about the decida scan so what are we going to do we are going to give your patient hepatobiliary immunodiacetic acid scan this will be secreted in the liver this will go to the bile and from the bile uh, from the liver it has got two ways one is it may enter the intestine second it may enter the gallbladder in this condition this is not possible this is not possible why why because now the gallbladder is inflamed gallbladder is inflamed therefore you see i'm really sorry let's very quickly check you see here this is i told you what happens normally this is i told you what will happen normally okay common bile duct fine now common bile duct i told you will mix up with main pancreatic duct and they will enter they will enter into the second part of the duodenum fine so normally i told you that the bile that the bile coming from here it will enter into the gallbladder but here what will happen in the acute cholecystitis the problem is problem is that the wall is badly edematous wall is badly edematous you see here gallbladder wall is badly edematous so therefore the bile cannot enter bile cannot enter fine so here it will show absent gallbladder why because bile and hida both they cannot enter the gallbladder they cannot enter the gallbladder they cannot enter the gallbladder amit ji gallstone itself they are asymptomatic but if they cause cholecystitis they are going to give rise to pain they are going to give rise to pain and they are going to give rise to fever also if your patient develops acute cholecystitis if your patient develops acute cholecystitis so initial investigation of choice is ultrasound fine it will show more than 4 mm thick Thickness, fine. Confirmatory, confirmatory investigation. I told you is HIDA scan. So HIDA scan. Yes, it is considered gold standard. It is considered gold standard. Fine. But make no mistake. It is considered gold standard like this. Fine. Non-visualization. Non-visualization. of the gall bladder non visualization of the gall bladder fine non visualization of the gall bladder may indicate that your patient is suffering from acute cholecystitis but but normal hida scan that will exclude acute cholecystitis if everything is normal if the hida is going into the gall bladder we say that your patient your patient is not having acute cholecystitis what is the treatment treatment is lap cholecystectomy laparoscopic cholecystectomy if your patient presents within 72 hours if your patient presents after 72 hours what is the treatment interval cholecystectomy interval cholecystectomy which is done after 6 to 8 weeks done after 6 to 8 weeks fine now most of the times the cholecystitis occurs if the gall bladder has stone sometimes a rare condition comparatively rare condition what is that acute a calculus cholecystitis acute a calculus cholecystitis may appear and this is common if your patient is a typhoid carrier if your patient has generalized septicemia if your patient has generalized septicemia if your patient is on 
total parental nutrition if there is fracture of the duct if there is fracture of the duct again the same thing investigation of choice ultrasound confirmatory or gold standard you may call it that happens to be hida scan treatment again is lap cholecystectomy only thing which you should remember here only thing which you should remember here is that this has a more fulminant course this has a more fulminant course more fulminant course means your patient can land up into trouble early now you see this is normal hida scan because you can see the gallbladder you can see the gallbladder normal hida scan normal hida scan you give hida the liver will appear bright the gallbladder will appear brighter because it is going to concentrate the bile by 5 to 10 times so you see this is appearing gray but this is appearing black because the hida is also concentrated like bile now emphysematous cholecystitis by the gas producing bacteria now you should do immediate cholecystectomy immediate cholecystectomy you see the black colored thing you see around the gallbladder this is air this is air or the gas produced by the bacteria gas produced by the bacteria this is called as emphysematous cholecystitis requires immediate surgery immediate surgery cholesterolosis this is also called as strawberry gallbladder strawberry gallbladder because the macrophages macrophages they consume the the bile salts they consume the bile salts fine they consume the bile salts right now this is also an indication of surgery basically this is what you get to see after you have performed the surgery after you have performed the surgery fine now porcelain gallbladder earlier they used to say it is a sure shot uh, case of uh, gallbladder developing into a malignancy no less than five percent chances of there of malignancy are there but still 5% chances are also significant. So this is an indication of cholecystectomy. You should do cholecystectomy if you see calcified gallbladder. Calcified gallbladder. You see calcified gallbladder. Calcified gallbladder. That is an indication of surgery. That is an indication of surgery. Now, what is this? You might have to examine this as an instrument. Viri's needle. So, Viri's needle we use. We use to just a second. Viri's needle. We use to inflate the abdomen if we are performing cholecystectomy. Which gas do we use? Carbon dioxide. Why not air? Because it supports combustion. Fire can spread throughout the abdomen, throughout the abdomen. So that is why we use carbon dioxide. We use carbon dioxide. Standard four ports, 10 mm port here, 10 mm port near the umbilicus and two 5 mm ports in the right hypochondrium right hypochondrium and which telescope do we use we use 30 degree telescope 30 degree telescope the camera the 30 degree telescope and the camera another question which they ask is surgeon stands on which side surgeon stands on left side of the patient surgeon may also like to stand between the legs of the patient between the legs of the patient fine now what area do we look for? We look for the Callet's triangle. We look for the Callet's triangle. And we are going to ligate two structures, cystic artery, cystic artery and cystic duct, cystic artery and the cystic duct. This is the name, Callet triangle. On one side, common hepatic duct. On one side, cystic duct and the inferior inferior surface of the liver they're going to ask it many times callot triangle callot triangle now what is moinian hum you get to see dilated 
राइट हिपैटिक आर्टरी मोइनियन हम मोइनियन हम राइट दिस इज अ कॉमन एनोमली एंड दिस कैन कॉज डिजास्ट्रस कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस डिजास्ट्रस कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस राइट अगेन वन थिंग दे मे आस्क एज इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन दैट इज हेसन्स कैनुला हेसन्स कैनुला राइट या now mirizi syndrome when the edema becomes too much stone is going to erode the wall of the bile duct stone is going to erode the wall of the bile duct fine stone is going to erode and enter the common bile duct you see here stone is going to erode and enter the common bile duct enter the common bile duct fine that is mirizi syndrome mirizi syndrome right now while you are performing the gallbladder surgery the question which they ask what is the most common cause of conversion what is the most common cause of conversion to open surgery so most common cause of conversion to open surgery is bleeding is bleeding fine right? now the duct may be injured the ducts may be injured so you just need to remember the name strasberg classification of the duct injury and bismuth classification of the duct injury bismuth classification of the duct injury any duct which is less than which is more than 3 mm in diameter should be repaired should be repaired should be repaired right bismuth classification bismuth classification right that is what they ask that is what they ask normally gallstone ileus so the gallstone may enter may enter into the intestine and then it will be lodged it will be lodged gallstone ileus the gallstone will be lodged at the iliopolic junction and you look for this word tumbling obstruction automatically relieving automatically occurring again tumbling obstruction what else you see pneumo bilia fine what else you see ectopic gallstone ectopic not at its normal position not at its normal position and these three things combined together are called as regular triad what is the treatment treatment is do the surgery relieve obstruction first then what you do is stabilize the patient and then you perform cholecystectomy then you perform cholecystectomy then you perform cholecystectomy that mean cholecystectomy should not be done immediately cholecystectomy should not be done immediately now any one of you will please reply what is investigation of choice in the mirizi syndrome what is investigation of choice in the mirizi syndrome what is the investigation of choice in the mirizi syndrome what is the investigation of choice for bile duct injury some lag there so answer for both is mrcp answer for both is mrcp mrcp answer for both is mrcp now cbd stones common bile duct stones most common clinical feature is pain but it may also give rise to pain fever and jaundice now this is similar to charcot triad similar to charcot triad because the stones they will cause thank you thank you thank you no 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 ercp see buddy i have asked you the investigation of choice make no mistake if they ask you gold standard investigation remember there will be some risk to your patient while you are doing that investigation 
fine if they ask you investigation of choice this investigation will be much more comfortable for your patient much more comfortable for your patient fine pain fever and jaundice pain fever and jaundice investigation of choice again is mrcp treatment of choice is ERCP plus papillotomy, papillotomy, and then you remove the stone. Then you remove the stone. If you are doing it by open surgery, open surgery, what is the treatment? Colli, toco, tomy, polydocotomy, and then you remove the stones and then closure over. T tube closure over T tube. Now, if the stones are found less than two years after cholecystectomy, they are called as retained stone. If they are found more than two years, they are called as recurrent stones. They are called as recurrent stones. Yes, yes, yes. It should be MRCP. It should be MRCP. Fine. Carcinoma, gallbladder, carcinoma, gallbladder. So it is common in Indian subcontinent, especially North India, especially North India. Common in females, common by 60 to 70 years of age. Remember, delayed presentation. There is often delayed presentation so the prognosis is extremely poor prognosis is extremely poor p53 k ras mutation h pylori h pylori fine this thing polyps more than one centimeter gallbladder polyps more than one centimeter they are risk factors so most commonly it is adenocarcinoma. Most commonly, it is adenocarcinoma. Clinical features, they are usually similar to chronic cholecystitis. They are similar to chronic cholecystitis, chronic cholecystitis. Fine. What are the common tumor markers? CA 19.9. First investigation, first investigation generally is ultrasound. First investigation generally is ultrasound. Fine. Now, the confirmatory investigation of choice is contrast CT. Confirmatory investigation of choice is contrast CT. Fine. If possible, radical N block resection radical and block resection fine we may also need to do extended hepatectomy why do we need to do hepatectomy because the preferred route preferred route of spread is direct invasion Preferred route of spread is direct invasion. Preferred route of spread is direct invasion. So it is going to invade. It is going to invade the, the liver. So that is why part of the liver also needs to be resected. You see, it is going to show pneumobilia. Pneumobilia. Which part? What, where do you get to see pneumobilia? In the regular striad, in the gallstone ileus, it is going to show pneumobilia, pneumobilia, the black colored dots, pneumobilia, right? Ah, it seems like we are, we are running. <laughs> Nevertheless, you can always watch it at a later date. Just give me a minute. They are the common, uh, yes, G, they are the commonly involved, commonly involved segment. That's why we have to cut them. 
now you see that's the normal anatomy of pancreas normal anatomy of pancreas main duct is named as the duct of wilson accessory duct is known as the duct of santorini duct of santorini duct of santorini so we are going to study the pancreas device some we are going to study the pancreas divide some why because this is considered the most common congenital anomaly the most common congenital anomaly so you see what is normally occurring what is normally occurring small duct the smaller duct is going to drain at the minor papilla while the major duct is going to drain the bigger duct is going to drain at the major papilla what happens here in the pancreas device that the bigger duct is going to open at the minor papilla fine so this will cause repeat episodes of pancreatitis this will cause repeated episodes of pancreatitis repeated episodes of pancreatitis fine so it is managed conservatively but if it is causing problems repeated pancreatitis then we can do papillotomy we can do papillotomy that is the treatment there fine now this condition annular pancreas fine annular pancreas so it occurs due to failure of the clockwise rotation failure of the clockwise rotation fine so dorsal bud ventral bud they develop on the different sides they develop on the different sides they don't fuse with each other like they normally do they develop on the different sides and in between what are they going to do they are going to compress the gall uh, the duodenum and commonly it is the second part of the duodenum which is affected your patient will develop intestinal obstruction fine and the vomiting this time more commonly will be non bilious mom will be non bilious so what is the treatment we don't do anything to the pancreas we just ask the duodenum to bypass so duodeno duo denostomy is the treatment duodeno duodenostomy is the treatment this is what you see annular pancreas annular pancreas fine annular pancreas pancreatitis these are the common causes fine gallstones most common ethanol that is the alcohol poisoning second most common second most common so apart from steroid what other drug the thiazide the thiazides fine anti retroviral therapy anti retroviral therapy yeah 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 it was there it was there this is another thing the causes of pancreatitis the causes of pancreatitis fine so what happens is because there is obstruction like this you see because there is obstruction the pancreatic enzymes are activated inside the pancreas they are activated inside the pancreas fine so they cause severe damage they cause severe damage what is the problem problem is that pancreas is non encapsulated organ so the damage will further spread throughout the retroperitoneum throughout the retroperitoneum and your patient will develop ecchymosis bruising if your patient develops it in the flanks we call it gray turner sign if your patient develops it around the umbilicus we call it cullen sign if your patient develops on the thighs in the groin region we call it fox sign fox sign fine fox sign the digestive enzymes you know the enzymes of uh, the pancreas lipase trypsin chymotrypsin they are all released into the retroperitoneum they are all released into the retroperitoneum they will digest they will digest whatever fat is present whatever fat is present now what is the problem when they will digest fat what will occur free fatty acid will be released 
which are negatively charged which are negatively charged so they will get saponified that means they will attract calcium which is positively charged so your patient will develop hypocalcemia will develop hypocalcemia now colon will be distended why because it is passing close by it is passing close by Fine. So you get to see cologne cut off sign. So let's say normally the cologne is like this. Here what it would be? It would be like this. Fine. So this part will be dilated. The cologne cut off sign. Fat around the kidneys will be digested and it will give rise to the sign which is called as renal halo sign which is called as renal halo sign renal halo sign fine around the kidneys right kidney left kidney fine now you get to see the different enzymes there and which is more specific naturally the amylase is raised in other conditions also fine and it may remain raised for long period of time so lipase is considered more specific is considered more specific whereas serum trypsin levels they are considered more sensitive markers more sensitive markers of the presence of the presence of uh, pancreatitis of the presence of pancreatitis fine Baltazar score, Baltazar score is based on the CT severity index, CT severity index, CT severity index. Why? Because the investigation of choice here is CT scan, investigation of choice here is CT scan, fine. MRI is also sensitive. Now, these are the different prognostic criteria they will be able to tell you how will how will your patient yes 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 how will your patient uh, behave i mean how will your patient uh, perform while you're being managed while you're managing the patient fine so because there are going to be huge third space fluid losses you need to give too much of IV fluids. You need to give your patient calcium. Fine. Remember, no antibiotics. No antibiotics are to be used. No antibiotics are to be used. Fine. What else do we use? A proteinin. A proteinin. What is a proteinin? That is pancreatic trypsin inhibitor. Pancreatic trypsin inhibitor. Pancreatic trypsin inhibitor. After six weeks, you might have to perform cholecystectomy if gallbladder is the cause. If gallbladder stone is the cause. Gallbladder stone is the cause. Fine. Complication. Complication. I forgot to mention these. So, ransom criteria is different for alcoholic for biliary pancreatitis fine ransom criteria I, I mean i don't think they were they want to go into too much detail fine but just in case you want to remember just remember this much that this is all what we measure glucose age of the patient whether the leukocytosis is present we measure the liver function test calcium levels super necessary third space loss that means how much of the fluid is lost how much iv fluid do we need to give oxygen saturation hematocrit fine now we also use apache two score acute physiology and chronic health evaluation so remember apache score more than eight indicates acute 
pancreatitis, severe acute pancreatitis. Another thing in the MCQ, if you want to see, it does not add, it does not take into account serum calcium concentration, right? Serum calcium concentration. WHO letter of pain management is used in chronic pancreatitis, is used in chronic pancreatitis, right? Now, the complication, the complication is pseudo pancreatic cyst. Why pseudo? Because the wall is made by granulation tissue and not by epithelium and not by epithelium, not by epithelium, fine. What are the other complications? Pert. Pertshire retinopathy, Pertshire retinopathy, fine. So that is due to punctate, very small hemorrhage in the blood vessels of retina, very small hemorrhages in the blood vessels of retina, Pertshire retinopathy. Pathy, Percher, retinopathy. So about the pseudopancreatic cyst, pseudopancreatic cyst, pseudopancreatic cyst. So most commonly it occurs near lesser peritoneal sac. Fine. Investigation of choice is contrast. CT. Investigation of choice is contrast CT. We do surgery if it is large. That means more than 6 cm in size. If it is persisting for 6 weeks, if it is causing obstruction, what is the preferred treatment? Preferred treatment is cyst jejunostomy preferred treatment is cystojejunostomy we can also do cystogastrostomy we can also do cystogastrostomy fine we can also do endoscopic drainage endoscopic drainage see cystogastrostomy cystojejunostomy Fine, cysto jejunostomy. Fine. So we use the GDO classification there. Now we move to the next thing there that is the chronic pancreatitis. That is the chronic pancreatitis fine so chronic pancreatitis chronic pancreatitis most common cause is alcohol lovely sahuji antibiotics we use antibiotics we use only antibiotics we use only when your patient has developed necrosis antibiotic we use only when your patient has developed infective complication otherwise you know it is a sterile necrosis it is a sterile necrosis fine sterile necrosis antibiotics are not necessary antibiotics are not necessary only when we are confirmed when we are sure that there is infective necrosis then we will use antibiotics then we will use antibiotics so second common cause is gallstone second cause is gallstone most common clinical feature is pain after meals what do they ask over here this is what they ask chain of lakes appearance which is seen on ERCP chain of lake appearance which is seen on ERCP make no mistake make no mistake what we may do is they may ask you what is the investigation of choice investigation of choice is MRCP with serotonin stimulation MRCP with serotonin stimulation with serotonin stimulation it is not ERCP which is the treatment of choice which is the investigation of choice no it is MRCP which it is MRCP we may also do the fecal 
fat test you see whether the lipase is reaching the intestine or not whether the lipase is reaching the intestine or not we may also do pancreo sorry may also do pancreo L'Oreal test to so see whether the pancreatic enzymes are being produced in adequate quantity or not fine treatment surgical treatment is posto operation surgical treatment is posto operation posto operation fine we may also perform duvals operation we may also perform the duvals operation duvals operation fine now diabetes mellitus may develop when large part of the pancreas is fibros fine so the indigestion the exocrine part will be affected first diabetes mellitus will occur very very late fine will occur very very late so if the diabetes mellitus develop in that case we will have to give our patient insulin we will have to give our patient insulin so pancreatic carcinoma pancreatic carcinoma fine so it is associated with k ras mutation herceptin 2 new mutation fine brca2 brca2 mutation and how could i forget it is associated with cigarette smoking it is associated with cigarette smoking fine this is much more common in the jews sorry they went off yeah sure 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 see surgery image i'm just slightly deviating from the topic please because you know dr vinash has uh, asked this image there now you see here let's say this is the normal pancreas fine now this is the normal duct which is smooth fine and it will easily drain it will easily drain into the duodenum easily drain into the duodenum now what happens what happens in the you know in this uh, condition chronic pancreatitis let's say this is the pancreas due to so much of fibrosis repeated infections oh sorry repeated inflammation this is the condition this is the condition of bile duct this is the condition of bile duct fine now very sorry so if we say that bile bile please flow normally bile says okay now let me enlarge it up let me zoom it up bile says okay i will flow obstruction somehow manages obstruction again somehow manages obstruction again somehow manages again obstruction fine so if the bile has to flow in this direction there will be multiple obstruction there will be multiple obstruction fine so what we do here what we do here is that we open the pancreas like this see this red line is the incision which we give and after we give the incision it opens up like this now you can see the entire duct entire duct you know when like we open the fish you must have seen the videos we open the fish like this uh, have you seen the cook you know in the youtube cookery channel they open the fish like this that is called fillet of fish filling of the fish so we open the pancreas like this entire duct is exposed entire duct is exposed then we suture it to the jejunum like this so the bile will now flow from all points into the jejunum all points into the jejunum and not like this not like this because here the chances of bile reaching into the duodenum are very less are very less fine are very less because of multiple fibrosis yash patel ji the pancreas will develop because the endocrine part of the pancreas 
sorry diabetes will develop because the endocrine part of the pancreas fails and that occurs very very late that occurs very very late Fine. First, the exocrine part will be affected. Minimal amount of lipase will be secreted. Your patient will develop steatoria because of fibrosis. There will be pain. Fine. So that is why we are doing those tests, uh, pancreolorial tests. Fine. Fecal fat test. Fine. That is what we are doing. Whipple procedure is different, Mahinderji. 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 Whipple procedure is different. So other procedure are ho and fray procedure. Whipple operation is totally different. We are coming to the Whipple operation. We are coming to the Whipple operation. So pancreatic tumors are common if there is history of diabetes mellitus. Pancreatic tumors are common if there is history of recurrent pancreatitis. Whipple, Whipple, W-H-I-P-P-L-U. Dr. Dakshilji, normally we start at 8 o'clock, but today I had some preoccupation, so we started at 8.30. We started at 8.30. Fine. So, it is associated with hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer. Fine. Now, most common site is the... Oh. <laughs> I did forgot. I did forget to switch the battery. Just a second, please. I'm really sorry. Most common site is the head of pancreas. When you're in the studio, they manage everything so nicely. But uh, here, when you have to do it all by yourself, you get to miss something. Fine. So most common site is the head of pancreas. Most common type is PDAC. PDAC means pancreatic duct adenocarcinoma. Pancreatic duct adenocarcinoma. Most common clinical feature. Most common clinical feature is jaundice. Most common clinical feature is jaundice palpable gallbladder oh 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 i wanted to show you this it is very well there yes we can still show you just give me a minute daily i keep on adding some of the stuff to my ppt so that, that they tend to get bigger and bigger for example this ppt of liver only liver and gallbladder that has got 170 slides I try to make them uh, cut short. I try to cut them short. Just give me a minute. Now, you see Corbusier's law. Corbusier's law. Just, I mean, uh, let's be patient for a minute. Corbusier's law states that if there is distended palpable gallbladder. And also your patient has jaundice. I'm repeating. If your patient has distended and palpable gallbladder. Also your patient has jaundice. This jaundice is not due to gallstones. This jaundice is not due to gallstones. Why? Because if gallstones are present. If gallstones are present. There will be fibrosis as you can see over here there will be fibrosis as you can see so Corbusier law states that it is most commonly due to pancreatic cancer it is most commonly due to the distal common bile duct obstruction which is caused by peripancreatic cancer around the pancreas peripancreatic means around the pancreas Fine. So you see, if there is cancer over here, this cancer I'm talking about. Fine. So that will cause obstruction to the flow of bile. That will cause jaundice and the gallbladder would become distended. Fine. This is Corbusier's law. This is Corbusier's law. Fine. Corbusier's law. Now, Corbusier's law has you know, two exceptions, two exceptions. One, if there is a large stone at the neck that will compress the common bile duct, your patient will have jaundice. That will cause enlargement of the gallbladder. 
your patient will have palpable gallbladder if there are two stones this is important palpable gallbladder just give me a minute and i'll explain it now this is very important there now let's say again the same thing So this is common bile duct. Corbusier's law. What is the Corbusier law? Corbusier law say that palpable gallbladder plus jaundice plus gallstone they cannot exist together. These three cannot exist together. Why? Because if they are gallstones, that will cause fibrosis, gallbladder will not be able to distend. The exception says will make it possible if there is a stone here, that will cause gallbladder to distend. If there is a stone here also, that will cause jaundice. So here is the first exception. Here is the first exception. Right? First exception. Your patient will have palpable gallbladder. Your patient will have jaundice. And your patient will have gallstones. All three of them occurring together. Same finding will be seen if there is a big stone here. Big stone at the neck. That will also cause jaundice and distended gallbladder these are the two exceptions these are the two exceptions to the corbusier's law corbusier's law <laughs> you know uh, i've bought the most expensive connection just for the classes you know because uh, naturally lag actually is irritating lag actually is irritating fine now if the tumor is affecting the tail, if the tumor is affecting the body, in that case, weight loss will be more common clinical feature. Jaundice will be late in that case. Jaundice will be late in that case. There will be weight loss. There will be weight loss. So the investigation most sensitive will be endoluminal ultrasound investigation of choice here will be contrast ct investigation of choice will be contrast ct tumor marker carcino embryonic antigen and ca19 ca19 doctor uh, you asked me one of you just a second Yes. So Corbusier's law, Corbusier law. These are the exceptions. Maybe if you want to take a screenshot, that will be uh, good for you. So Dr. Vinash ji, I'm going to tell you about the Whipple procedure now. But before that, these are the exceptions to the Corbusier's law, Corbusier's law. Now, in the pancreatic adenocarcinoma, you'll get to see reverse three sign because of the enlargement of the head enlargement of the head of the pancreas you will get to see reverse three sign now what is this the antral pad sign you see here the pancreas will cause indentation of the antrum of the stomach indentation of the antrum of the stomach fine this you'll get to see on the contrast study like barium like barium Fine. This is Whipple operation. Whipple operation. Whipple operation. What do we do? They say, what areas do we cut? Because there is tumor in the pancreas. We are going to cut the pancreas. We are going to cut the head of the pancreas. Fine. Now, because the areas which are close by may have cancer. So, we are going to cut the distal stomach. We are going to cut the duodenum. We are going to cut the distal common bile duct distal common bile duct and we are going to have three anastomoses common bile duct will join with the jejunum stomach will join with the jejunum 
and remaining pancreas also will join with the jejunum that is your whipple operation that is your whipple operation fine whipple operation now we can also use chemotherapy we can also use gemcitabine we can also use 5 fluoro uh, 5 fluorouracil and we can use intraoperative radiotherapy also intraoperative radiotherapy before i finish my sincere uh, and uh, you know uh, uh, humble kind of apologies that we have to finish large topic and i want to deliver the maximum so we generally do it at extremely rapid pace extremely rapid pace fine but then that is for quick revision and uh, believe me i try to I, I try not to skip any vital information fine but whatever is there in the book i try to cover the maximum fine speed naturally remains an issue remains an issue panugati beta what what i suggest is have a look at the mcqs have a look at the mcqs don't trust me don't take my word have a look at the mcqs if you are able to solve 80 90% of the mcqs i believe they are sufficient always there avinash ji so i'm here for your queries if you got any queries please do send me no queries <laughs> so parangati beta do check do check the mcq today and in the next class uh, we'll have a word we'll have a word together heli beta never fold your hands in front of your teacher we are we because of you people we are we because of you people you make you people make us it's not the other way around that is the etiology this is not important i believe i mean they can't ask you the about the alcohol and that tigaru classification it's not a classification this is just a mnemonic right see if already uh, your patient has diabetes mellitus naturally you are going to shift to your, shift your patient to insulin if the mixed are there in the option be safe and mark them if be safe and mark them fine because pure cholesterol stones are rare and remember pure cholesterol stones can be managed medically can be managed medically fine you can give chino deoxycholic acid urso deoxycholic acid but but the stone should be 1 to 2 cm in size means stone should be very very small fine stone should not be more than 2 cm in size should not be more than 2 cm in size fine stone gallbladder should be functional and there should be no acute symptoms there should be no acute symptoms because we want we want the pancreas to secrete large bolus of enzymes that is why we are giving it we, we, that is why we are stimulating it mithila probably beta i have answered your question because pure cholesterol stones are not that common you should answer that as mixed stones and is it is difficult but it is difficult i understand it is difficult but you see the the, the, the past percentage is rising rapidly is rising rapidly fine and you know uh, if you want encouragement fine believe me if you are here at this hour attending class fine attending this class at this hour fine after you have read everything 110% take it from me in writing that you will pass 
Zollinger Ellison syndrome is also called, uh, you know, this is commonly seen in the Zaro triangle. So they are gastrin secreting tumor. You know, gastrin is a hormone which causes increased acid secretion. So practically there will be too much of acid, too much of acid. So they are seen around the duodenum, they are seen in the pancreas, they are seen in the duodenum and in the pancreas. So they are going to secrete, they will keep on secreting the acid. You do the truncal vagotomy, even then your patient will have, as, uh, even then your patient will have ulcers. At that time your doubt goes towards gastrinomas, gastrinoma, gastrinoma and they can be malignant also. If there is right hypochondrium pain with cuffing, but Murphy sign is not positive. Murphy sign is positive in the superacute cholecystitis. Whenever there is massive edema, whenever there is massive edema, only then it will be positive. Right? So I would like to end the class and then again we'll get back to you soon. Right? Thank you so much. Thank you so much.